Today is Sunday, it's December the 4th, 2022, and I'm coming to you with today's Heart of a Shepherd devotional titled, A Failure to Thrive, A Tragic Case of Spiritual Under. Nourishment. Now, as you have your Bible, I do invite you. Hebrews chapter 5 and Hebrews chapter 6 is our scripture reading. Our devotional, however, will be focused upon Hebrews chapter 5. Well, we have noticed in the first four chapters of Hebrews, the, uh, the writer of that book challenging believers regarding the preeminence of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 3 also presented to us the danger of unbelief and hardening your heart and exhorted us that if we're to know peace, three things should be true in our life, or to know uh, rest even. The first was fear, to fear and revere and worship God. The second was to have faith or to believe the Lord. And then the third was to fight, that is, labor diligently in the Scripture. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, as you continue looking, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and 16, 16 prepares the way for our introduction to Hebrews chapter 5. Then Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15, Christ again is presented as the believer's high priest, and the writer of Hebrews in Hebrews 4, 16 urged believers, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace, that is God's favor, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And then we would ask the questions, on what grounds might we enter into God's presence with our petitions. And it's not on the basis of our works. The prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah 64, 6, that our righteousness are his filthy rags. But it is on the grounds of Christ's righteousness being credited to our account, paying our sin debt in full, that we might come into God's presence. Now that brings us to Hebrews chapter 5. Now in Hebrews chapter 5, we will see a contrast between the high priest that was of men, ordained by men, and compared to the great high priest, Jesus Christ. Now, as you look at Hebrews 5, verses 2 and 3, we understand that even the most dedicated, conscientious high priest dared not approach God without offering a sacrifice for his sins. Now, while the high priest was chosen among men, God declared of Jesus Christ in Hebrews chapter 5 and verses 5 and 6, Thou art my son. Today I have begotten thee. Today I have birthed thee. That picture of the incarnation. Continuing, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Who was Melchizedek in the Old Testament? He was not only the king of Salem, that is ancient Jerusalem, but he was also God's priest, really a type or an example of Christ. Now, pause for a minute. As you look at Hebrews 5 and look at verse 7 through 10, we remember the agony of Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane when he, be, when he was betrayed and arrested. Now, when you remember that, you will understand Hebrews 5, 7 through 10. Now, in the garden, you might remember that Jesus prayed, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. And the cup there is a cup of suffering that Christ would soon face betrayal, arrest, beatings, ultimately his crucifixion. He prayed a second time in the garden in Matthew 26. Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass from me except I drink it, thy will be done. The absolute surrender of the Son to the will of the Father. Now, it is that agony that is portrayed in Hebrews 5, 7, and 8, where we read, He had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. And verse 8, though, though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. You see, Christ obeyed his Father's will, and he suffered the penalty of our sins. 
because he was the perfect sinless sacrifice, we know him, verse 9, as the author or the captain of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Obey him being an implication of one's faith proven by works. Well, we need to close on Hebrews 5, verse 11 through 14, where you're going to see a case study of undernourishment. Now, not physically, but spiritual uh, undernourishment. In a mournful, regretful, regrettable way, the writer of Hebrews begins to write in verses 11 through 14, describing in the first century what is true of the church in the 21st century, and that is a failure to thrive spiritually. As today, there were some who professed in the first century salvation, but whose lives were spiritually anemic. The writer of of Hebrews continues that they had no spiritual appetite, and the diagnosis of their spiritual condition was this, Hebrews 5 verse 11, ye are dull of hearing. Rather than being teachers of the word, they were content with elementary doctrines. What is described in verse 12 of Hebrews 5 is the first principles of the oracles of God. Those believers had failed the Lord, but they had also failed his people, for they had remained in the spiritual nursery in verse 13, and they were unable to delight in the advanced doctrines and study of the word. And sadly, their spiritual maturity, immaturity rather, in verse 14 of Hebrews 5, left them vulnerable and unable to, and I quote, discern both good and evil. Tragically, is that not the sad portrait of many 21st century believers in churches? Perhaps the carnality that is found within our churches is because people have not grown up spiritually. Therefore, they do not understand. They do not discern between that which is good and that which is evil. May you and I be people of God's word, disciplined in it, that we might discern between good and evil. Thank you for joining me for the heart of a shepherd. And I bid you God bless. Bye-bye.